Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bruise and Blades. Sorry, that was uh, my. I was using my other watch and it was out of time. I don't have my Apple Watch on tonight. Welcome to so Bruce I gotta mute myself there. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see everybody. Already got 23 on here. That's always awesome to see. Uh, Tackle Centro asked the obvious question first. Uh, what everybody's got in their pockets today? Today I had my. USMA Blade Exclusive Hinder Half-Track Warncliff. So yeah, and by the way, guys, uh, go check out on Facebook if you are remotely a Hinderer fan. It's a Hinder Collector's uh, page on Facebook. It's awesome. Uh, go check that out. Uh, today's a very good day to do that. So uh, Rick had a rough weekend. So uh, go, 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 go blast that page. Make him feel good. Carbon Fiber Benchmade Mini Freak Zach says, I just got a shipping notification on mine. I should have it probably, I think, Tuesday, actually. So uh, pretty excited about that. What am I drinking tonight? Well, I lost a bet last week. If you guys saw, I put up my beloved Hinder X 18 No Choil Warncliffe, the DLT trading exclusive one in full working finish with the Carbon Fiber Warhog scale, which I named Warpig. Said who had the best tender between myself and Metal Complex. He won. He won fair and square. Barely. Barely. I think if the voting would have gone another day, I'd have won. But uh, he won 51% to 49%. So uh, I have to drink tonight. Because this is what he always drinks. Because he's a weirdo. Instead of drinking a nice fancy beer like I usually do. Tonight. Drinking Bud Light. Which it says on the box... Only four ingredients. Barley, hops, water, rice? Okay. But I think it's mostly water. So let me let me get my bottle opener. Oh wait, no, I don't need one. It's just a twist, it's a twist top. Throw that back there. I'm gonna drink it though. Ugh. I think I just drank some beer. I'm not really 100% sure, but uh, a, a bet's a bet. But I will say, in this bet, he didn't say I only had to drink Bud Light. That was never specified. And I bought my son this for his birthday, and he doesn't like it. So uh, we're going to supplement it with this. I think that's a much better thing to do. So uh, I will use this to wash down, wash down the Bud Light. So my favorite thing I've ever heard, one of my favorite jokes ever in a TV show. Um, if you watch uh, the Larry Sanders show, which is a great show, by the way, you should binge watch that entire thing. I'm going to drink it on ice. Don't be responsible because it is, it's just hot out. Um, uh, there's a character in there called Artie, and he's uh, it's played played by uh, Rip Torn, and there's this great bit where he's up late at night hanging around the studio, and it's just him and the maintenance guy, and the maintenance guy, I think it's Yakov Shmirnov plays him, a Russian guy, and he says, son, have you ever had Glenlivet scotch? And he says, no, I have not, and he goes, well, when you go to heaven, and you, and, and you ask God, or God asked you why he should allow you in. This is what you're going to smell on his breath. I just, I always remember that about Glenn Livett, but uh, I like Glenn Livett anyway, but that's just such a great, such a great little bit in a, in a show. I highly suggest you go watch it. So I'm going to cleanse my palate from the uh, Bud Light now with a little Glenn Livett. Ah, that's good stuff. That is very, very good. Ron Burgundy loves scotch, too. Yeah, everybody should love scotch. Scotch is great. Well, we're up to 70 already now. Awesome. Yeah, that's good, too, the fellow there. that's that's uh, That fellow there, that's also very good. Crud light, yep. God, this stuff is disgusting. Luckily, my son is 21 now, so I had to buy a six-pack, and I just said, have at thee. So I said, I'm going to drink this one because I'm contractually obligated to, and he can have the rest. He had one with dinner, and he didn't like it either. That is gross stuff. You know what? I had to go to a I had to go to a gas station to get this. Like grocery stores don't even sell Bud Light in my area. Because in Rochester we have like literally 
no no exaggeration, I think like 30 craft breweries, and we have Jenny, Genesee beers here. So, in Yingling's right down the road. So, uh, nobody even carries Bud Light. All I could find in my grocery store was the big tall boys, and I was not drinking one of those. So, and I don't have a sticker on it because uh, I was out of them. I thought I still had a couple, but I don't. I think I gave them away to people. So, I have a couple of Metal Complex stickers, but they're stuck on stuff, so... Couldn't peel one off, but, um, uh, so yeah, there is a, not a kind of a knife sale tonight. I don't have many left because the Patreon supporters, which by the way, if you go to Patreon, my, there's a link down below there. If you want early access to my sales, you can get those. Um, so go do that. But I do have some of the knives on the table here for sale right now. Not these two. Oh, oh, that was close. Don't drop a knife. Luckily it landed the right way. So I didn't stab me in the chest. Um, these four are for sale. Prices are listed down below, the instructions, all that stuff. Uh, this one is going to be reviewed tomorrow morning, the Real Steel Links. Really nice knife, actually. I just I just don't really need it. Uh, the Newport is for sale because uh, I have a prettier one, which I'll show in a minute. Shikari, I don't have any more, any more videos to do with it. The Cansep Warrior, just no more videos to do with it. So if you want to buy a knife, go link down below. And uh, or look at the links down below. And just uh, there's instructions on how to email me and stuff. I'll do first come surf, first serve when this is over with. Like I always do. Man, that Bud Light is already kicking back on me. This is disgusting. If you want my shikra, just send me send me an email. It's a very very fair price. <laughs> Watching Brian stab himself. It was close. Luckily, it hit my chest like this instead of pointy end first because it's a very sharp knife. Um, <laughs> hello, 91. Slicey's been stabbed in the chest, though. It was actually more my fat gut than it was uh, anything else, but, uh. Oh, you finally watched my stand-up. I hope you weren't disappointed. I've actually had gigs all weekend. This is, I had a full weekend of, uh, of stand-up. I was, it was in a parking lot. We were doing, uh, drive-in shows. I was with Jimmy Schubert. I don't know if any of you guys know who that. It's all linked down below, Jock's Knives. It's right in the description down there. Uh, slicey dice seventy five at gmail dot com, but everything, all the instructions are all down there below. Um, but uh, yeah, it was. It's weird. It's it, like I've done it twice now. I did it a couple weekends ago, and I was featuring. So that means featuring means I had half an hour, and that was much better. Uh, this time I agreed to host because they wanted somebody to host who had done it before. Because it's weird, like doing stand with people sitting in cars. Um, it's a it's odd. So they had me host because I'm a steady hand and I've, I'm an experienced comic and they had me host and they paid me well and it was fine. Uh, but yeah, they it when you go up and you're doing stand-up on projector, they, they can, we have a stage and everything everybody can see, but you're on big projector screens, you're, people are listening to it in their cars. Um, it's a bit odd for a minute. So um, yeah, what did you carry while hosting? Um, I had, actually every night I was there, Someone asked to use my knife because we were taking up and setting down the, the stage and everything every night. So uh, what was it? I had a smock, my smock last night. Um, this, the Neutron one night. And uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, uh, my uh, uh, Protec uh, ATAC another night I had so but every night I was there somebody asked to use my knife this one I did not allow them to use I said what do you want to be cut <laughs> so uh yeah don't I'm not gonna let them use the ATAC not that it's it's expensive but it's not even that it's just they only make 200 of them every four years so I was like I'm not gonna just hand this to somebody who I don't know if they know how to use stuff but the smock and the neutron I handed to people and let them use it um even though my smock is very, very pretty. But uh, if Joey Diaz comes to New York, you guys hook it up. Let me know. I'll fly down. Lucy says, yeah, I, I know Joey. Uh, Joey Diaz is a great dude. Love him. Hey, Metal Complex. Look, I'm fulfilling my bet. I don't have one of your stickers, but I am drinking a Bud Light. But I am uh, supplementing it with uh, some Glenlivet scotch <laughs> to wash it down. I'm doing the reverse chaser. Um, anyone plan on getting the new Spider Co. Canis? Mine arrives tomorrow. So you will see a first impressions video of that on the morrow. 
Um, I'm going to try and get the review of this edited and up uh, early in the morning of the Real Steel Lynx, and then in the evening you will see my first impressions of... Uh, Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Lucifer, this is the owner of Blade Runner Systems. We've been having lots of long chats. I did not recognize your uh, your YouTube handle. Uh, really cool company. I actually have one of your knives right here that I'm probably not going to remember the name of because uh, there's just so much going on in my brain holes right now. But I'm really liking this. I've actually been carrying this quite a bit. Uh, the Nomad, I believe, correct? You're on here. So nice little Tanto, big, beefy, little... Big beefy little bastard drinking scotch, so uh, I'm uh, I'm probably gonna get a bit sweary tonight, but uh, such is life, I guess. Um, but yeah, this thing is pretty cool. I do have to say, not a fan of green, but this green actually with the bronze, it kind of works. Um, and I know they come in other colors, but uh, pretty cool beefy little knife. Action's fantastic. I like it a lot. Uh, <laughs> MC didn't come to glow. Yeah, he hit 20,000. Everybody thinks, like, I'm mad about it. Like, people were on, on on Instagram, mostly, Super Steel Steve, were trying to get me to, like, be upset about it. No, MC works really hard. He he hit 20,000 way before me. Completely fine with that. It's uh, He works really hard. I don't have the time to put in all the stuff that he does. So, you know, good good for him. Uh, and he's a nice guy. If he if he was a dick, I'd be upset, but he isn't. So, um, yeah, good for him. Yeah, I thought you had to swear while drinking scotch. I think you do. I'm half Irish, half Scottish, so I like bourbon just as well. I'm kind of 50-50, but I usually, if I go to buy myself a bottle of something, I buy scotch. Uh but except for, I'll drink, uh, I'll definitely knock back some Maker's Mark while I'm out and stuff sometimes. I drink Maker's Mark when I have a cold. That's my cold medicine instead of uh, NyQuil, I just drink Maker's Mark. Because it's 90% of cold medicine, it's just the alcohol. But no, congratulations to MC for that. Um, it, it's, uh, yeah, do 20,000 in that amount of time is insane. I'll, I'll get you. I'm not going to catch up to you, but I'll get 20,000. You, you've... You've passed me, and I'm never going to catch up, and I've accepted that. So, uh, um, But, yeah, I'm just aiming for 20000 by November 11th because that's my three-year anniversary of starting YouTube. So 20000 in three years is pretty impressive, and that's what I'm aiming for. So, uh, um, And I'm on track, so I'm happy. I'm not upset. I'm late. What's for sale? It's all linked down below, but it's these middle four. If you go down to the, uh, the description down there, so... Um, Metal Complex says, Slicey and, uh, Slicey and I will always be buds, no pun intended. Yeah, I like I like, I like, like MC. He, he, he makes me laugh both intentionally and unintentionally. So uh, I like people like that. Oh, this, this is disgusting, man. I don't know how you drink this stuff. I, I, it's like, this is like, Bud Light is like to beer what those, like, if you buy like an orange flavored sparkling water, Bud Light is to beer what orange-flavored sparkling water is to orange juice. It has a slight beer aftertaste, but it's not beer. Ugh. Piss water is uh, very accurate. That is exactly how I would describe this stuff. Bud Light means Dark Horse 1. Yes, barely. Barely. It's 51% to 49%. I think I think I think he won because uh, XM twenty fours are a bit more rare. <laughs> See, you guys are making me feel better because yeah, MC won the best hinderer, but obviously you guys prefer my taste in beer infinitely more to uh, to what his uh, knife taste is. So that's fine with me. At least I have good taste in something. How is your Wii MRF? I sold it a while ago. I just didn't really have a need for it. I, I have to keep flipping stuff to keep keep the feed the beast, as I always say. Woodford Reserve is very, very good, the, that fellow there. That's excellent stuff. But I'm washing it down with Glenn Livet because MC did not specify that I only had to drink Bud Light. Only beat you by a pickle slice. All right, Supa. Making a making a reference. Do you still have your real steel G-slip? I do. I do still have that. I've not carried it in a while, but I do still have it. DTOM 
says, uh, that new train has some beautiful scales match. Anderson is a craftsman. He is. And I saw he posted on Facebook today. I don't know if you, uh, if you saw that. He, his new machine, he's going to be able to do like G10 and carbon and all kinds of stuff. And he's going to branch out into other brands and stuff. So that is going to be awesome. I, he's a great dude and, uh, does amazing work. And I can't wait to see him branch out more just beyond the TRMs and stuff. It's going to be really, really cool. Are you going to review it? I actually, I think I may have it recorded and I just, things have been coming so fast and furious. I just haven't put it up. I got it really late. So by the time I got it, other people had already reviewed it and uh, talking about the G slip and I just haven't yet. So MC was drinking that habanero mango stuff. That's even worse. Flavored whiskey. Let's vote here. What's worse? Flavored whiskey or Bud Light? I don't know which one is worse. I can't tell. Oh, Tecate fine swell. Tecate is all right. I don't actually hate that very much. You think Bud Light is worse than flavored whiskey? Man, yeah, they both suck, but man. If, you ever, if we ever uh, get to go to a trade show together that's up and operating MC, I'm going to take you out and show you what proper alcohol is like. This is like whiskey. You don't need to flavor it. If you do it right, it's just good like it is. So, <laughs> Stud Fishing says, I'm 15 and they both sound disgusting. Good man. Keep that in mind. You drink regular whiskey and decent beer. I don't mind cheap beer. There's cheap beer I like. I don't mind PBR. I think PBR is actually Pabst Blue Ribbon if you're a fancy person. I don't think PBR is that bad. But, uh, and I like Jenny, plain old Jenny. I like regular Budweiser. That's fine. It has nothing to do with the price. I like Yingling. Yingling's good. Bud Light is just disgusting. So why I'm selling this ProTech, this is the, the Newport. That's why it is on the uh, for sale list is because I got this one. So, yeah, this is my Newport now. It is the 3410, which is like natural aluminum and carbon fiber. Mmm. I really, really like this. Popped up on Southern Edge Knife Works, and I said, go to southernknifeworks.com, use the code S SDSEK at checkout, get 50% off and free shipping. But uh, no, I, I saw it pop up on there, and I was like, nah, I need this one. I, I've said multiple times I wanted a fancier Newport, and um, now I have a fancier Newport. So, uh, And it's not that horribly expensive. It's not that much more than the standard one, but um, I just like the look of it. Got that kind of tuxedo look. Michelob Light isn't horrible. Like, I, I I can drink that. I can tolerate that. Uh, not very much of it, but I can have, like, one. Miller High Life is actually okay. I don't mind Miller High Life. That's cheap. Um, I almost bought that black Newport from Patreon for the, the exact same <laughs> the exact same reason. Well, go, go get it. It's still available. Just shoot me an email. Shoot me an email and... Uh, we're still sitting here. Coors Banquet. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, see, I don't, I'm not a beer snob. I just want stuff that tastes good. And this is just awful. But have you had fruit flavor beer? I have had fancy fruit flavor beers. A couple of them I liked. Grapefruit, I like a little hint of grapefruit. That's okay. But no, I don't like like blueberry beer and like really crazy over the top stuff. Molson Canadian is my cheap beer choice. Also not bad, Libby. See, I'm not a, I'm not a snob. This is just. This is just horrible. This is... I almost made a very off-color joke. This is the very bad thing of beers. Um, it's just disgusting. Oh, cool. Jeremy Russell sent me some beer. He has good taste. I'm sure that'll be good. Stuff I drink. Bud, Bush, Coors, Michelob. That's it. Sometimes water. Not my favorite. Well, then... Drink Michelob on your show instead of Michelob's fine. A Coors is fine. Not a Coors Light, but a regular Coors is all right. You could, you could really make your, you could make, you really raise your, uh, your cred just by not by Bud Light. Yeah, drink PBR. At least PBR hipsters think it's cool. And this is only 4.2% alcohol. What the hell is that? Uh, hey, it's Lacey Dicey. 
what you drank in Germany. Um, it was, uh, I lived in an area, so Line Knives, what is weird in Germany? Well, you know this because you live in Austria. Like, it's very regionalized. So you just wind up with um, uh, whatever beer is in your area. And I lived right near Bitburg. So it was mostly Bitburger is what all the the bars had. Everybody thinks, oh, you go to beer, you get a whole bunch of beers. Yeah, in Austria you do. But in regular Germany, you just get what they have. And it's usually three different things. It's three versions of the same beer. Uh, it's getting better, but it, it was that way when I lived there. So a lot of Bitburger. Um, I liked uh, Erdinger. I drank a lot of Erdinger. That was really good. Um, the Erdinger Dunkel, the Erdinger, Erdinger Dark, I liked that a lot. That's what I bought and had like in my house. Um, but when I was out, a Bitburger, which I actually have Bitburger in my refrigerator right now because I had to develop the taste for it. And I, I drink Bitburger is kind of like my light beer when I just want some, I just want beer and I don't want crazy aftertaste or anything uh but yeah bit ein bit was a thing i said a whole lot um did you get the easy c 2.0 this morning no i did not um so i'm gonna put the for sale knives away just you guys email if you want them i'm gonna post them oh thank you very much Zach. stuff yeah the super chat's open i never forget to remember never forget to mention that or never remember to mention that um i'm gonna put these away i'm gonna bring out there's a video i'm doing tomorrow or not tomorrow, I'm sorry, later this week. I think I have it scheduled for Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I got a lot of prototypes. So uh, you guys want to see some prototypes? I'm not going to bring them all out because I want you to watch watch the video. But um, One of the very cool things about having a YouTube channel and being the editor of a knife magazine is that you get to see stuff uh, before other people do. Um, or get to handle stuff. I think these have all been shown like on Instagram or whatever, but, uh, I don't, but not only people get to handle them. So a couple companies sent me some prototypes. So you guys want to see some prototypes? If you don't answer, I'm not going to bring them out. So you gotta say, you want to see some prototypes? Stuff you haven't seen? Thank you very much, Big Red. Ooh, peanut butter whiskey. Does not sound terrible. I have to say, that does not sound terrible. Um... <laughs> One person always has to say no. Um, okay, so uh, we have two companies, uh, Niche Designs and Cancept. Cancept sent me a bunch. I'm going to bring out one of each. So which ones should I bring out? Um, I guess I know what to. So the first one is, I'm going to say visually, it's a bit of a shocker, but actually carrying it and using it, it's really good. Hey, Big Red. By the way, go check out on KnivesIllustrated.com. Big Red EDC really hooked us up and did a really cool video. Uh, he did a little brief review of the Wee Knives Kite Fin. He freaking killed it. Awesome guy. Really appreciate it. I didn't have to do anything editing-wise. I just put it up as he sent it to me. That is what I want. I am doing some more guest reviews some, from some other people. I think Zach Stuff, who's on here right now, said he wanted to do one. Just do that, Zach. So, it, yeah, if you want to see some of your favorite um, YouTubers, uh, yeah, that I was told when I got hired at Knives Illustrated that it was okay to bring in some of my boys. So I'm doing that, trying to get some other channels, some more exposure and stuff. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. So here's the first product we have. This is from Niche Designs. It's visually shocking, but uh, actually uh, I really do like using it. Um, and this is... They don't have a, I don't think they have a name for it yet. This is the, the Niche Designs prototype. Very tall, kind of warny, cleavery kind of thing. Uh, it's big in the pocket for sure, but it's very. It's a pretty thin blade stock. It's very thin behind the edge. Slices like a dream. And just, it's not a chunk, though. It's not that heavy. Let's bring out the uh, eel scales here. It's actually not too horrible. And... Um, I actually like it, and I'm not the only one. Eugene Kwan sent these to me. They went to Eugene first, then they went to me, and he likes them too. So, uh, yeah, it's 4.87 ounces. Really not that bad. Um, and just as using it to actually, like, cut things, especially, like, long cardboard cuts, it's great. They sent it to me with a flipper and non-flipper. This is the one I like the most is the non-flipper. Um, I like the finish on one of the flipper ones a little bit better. But um, you'll see that when I, I do a video about it. But um, 
It's a no. It's it's bigger than a chode because it's actually quite it's a, quite large. But uh, I I didn't think I'd like it at all, and I really do. Ergos are excellent. It's very thin. I like it a whole lot. Uh, another prototype I got in. I don't think there's going to be m many changes before this one goes to production. So they asked me for my suggestions, and I only made one. But um, this is the Cancept Falcon, or K1007. Uh, this is the one with a copper insert, so it's a little heavy because it's got a copper insert. But a really nice front flipper. I like this one a whole lot. They sent me some other ones as well, but you'll have to watch the video for that. There is a Michael Willemson design that's pretty cool. Uh, but this one was my favorite, and uh, the only thing I asked them to change, you know me, uh, there's a hump for a lanyard hole. The only suggestion I made was get rid of that. But other than that, I really like it. The action is great on the front flipper. Works really well. It's super comfortable in the hand, other than you can just barely feel that. Not too much, but yeah, just, just get rid of that. You don't need the lanyard hole on it or do a little through pin or something. Um, but yeah, it smells very coppery, though. I will say this copper is the most uh, most odor-intensive copper I've ever seen. You can I can smell it from here. But um, it's beautiful, and it's really comfortable in the hand. Pretty thin behind the edge. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's in the video, but uh, yeah, nicely crowned spine and everything. Really well done. I just don't... If it came out with lanyard hole, I'd still probably like it, but I just don't think it needs it. Um, I'm just not a lanyard hole guy, but yeah, there'll be a video up Tuesday, Wednesday with uh, all the... Proto I think I have seven prototypes right now. I've got like three three versions of this, and then there's like four um, four CANSAP prototypes. So um, yeah, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's fun getting prototypes in sometimes, so... Uh, especially when they're just like, there's no obligation to do anything with them. You can make a video if you want, but it's, but we really just want your opinion. And that's what all of these were. Uh, <laughs> video idea, best smelling knives. <laughs> Hopefully none of them smell like anything. Like, that's the goal. Uh, Dusty Butler says, what's up, Slice? You have a drink for me already. I'm, gonna, I'm not getting very far in this Bud Light. So I'm going to have a big drink of Bud Light, and then I'm going to wash it down with some Glenlivet. Is MC still on here or is he putting his kids to bed? Because oh, I want his opinion on whether or not I'm violating the rules by having another drink alongside the Bud Light. God, that stuff is disgusting. I'm so glad I went to high school in upstate New York where we didn't drink that swill. Actually, in high school, we drank worse. We drank Keystone Light, which is terrible stuff. Keystone Ice, if everybody had a couple extra bucks. Remember Ice Beer? Whatever happened to that? I should have got Coors Light. I couldn't. I was, uh, it was a, um, it, I lost a bet, so I had to. Hello, Southern Edge Knife Works. Is, I assume this is Chad. Good to see you, sir. I was just showing off the uh, Newport I got from you guys. Everybody's very impressed with it. I love Newports. They're just so slicey and classy, and this one is just looks like a tuxedo. I love it. It isn't white. A lot of people th thought when I posted on uh, Instagram that it was white. It's not white. It's just natural aluminum. So if you see it up close, it's just, it's not white. So we'll put the prototypes away now and just bring out some eye candy. Again, the other, I did have some stuff for sale. There's a little note down below. I don't have enough to sell right now to do a full on sale for sale video. So I think I'm just going to, um, uh, Post my Instagram probably tomorrow, if nothing else. Do not buy Southern Edge Knife Works. They support Bud Light. Lies! Lies! Oh, somebody mentioned the Malibu. I have mine here because I never have it very far away since I got it. Uh, spoiler alert for next month's most carried is definitely the Malibu's absolutely going to be on there. Um, what else do we want to bring out? Uh, I'll bring out what I had in my pocket today, I guess. You guys always like to see this one. And what else do I have here with an arm's reach? Uh, we will do these two. We have SOCOM Elite. Still loving that thing. 
Tell you what was in my pocket when the riots were near my house. Uh, SOCOM Elite. And the uh, Mini RSK. Lion Knife says the best tech Ascot wood looks great also. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I gave mine to Keith to say thank you for all the stuff he does to help me out moderating and stuff on here. And uh, it's in the dreaded in transit status on on uh, U.S. Postal Tracking, so that's not great. No, don't show me the warning hinder. That's one of my grail knives. It is great. It's really cool. I hope I hope we can convince Woody to do another run of them because, uh, I mean, I have one, but just for your sake, I hope they do that. I have one of my SOCOM elites out for warranty care. Can't wait to get it back. That, that fellow says, yeah, I'd love to know how that goes. Um, I've heard they're pretty good, but I I don't know. Yeah, and then I had, I for a brief moment, I had two SOCOM elites. I had one with the regular uh, drop point as well. I got a, uh, with a coated blade, I got a, use one in on that trade me anything and i sold that to keith very cheaply so that he could have one because he's always one on one so uh, but i like the tanto for myself maybe one day i will get a socom elite tanto they're amazing it took it took me 14 months to find mine and like i have connections so it's you just have to keep your eye out and if i always say with microtex if you find something that is close to what you want just buy it because if you wait for the perfect one, it's going to take a really long time. I finally got this one, but yeah, like I said, 14 months was uh, North Carolina is no slouch in the brew game, John James says. My sister lives in Raleigh, and you know, yeah, I've had some pretty good beers down there that were local. The cheapest tender here is like 590 and that's slip joint. Taz's World says, where are you at, Taz's World? If you said, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Um... Hey, how difficult was it to change the ball cage on the Manix 2, Matt JS? It wasn't, I wouldn't classify it as difficult. I would classify it as what I say is sweary. Uh, you just have to be really careful, pay attention to where everything is, make sure springs don't go flying, and um, it's, it's not, and make sure balls don't go flying, which is really words to live by. Uh, but just keep a really good track of everything. Make sure you've got it on a good rubber mat so stuff doesn't go bouncing. And, um, yeah, be careful. So, uh, but take your time, be careful. It's not that horrible. I've, I've done a lot worse. Just doing anything to a regular Benchmade access lock is worse. So don't worry about that. Um, you live in Raleigh and you love it here. John James says, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind Raleigh at all. I used to live in, uh, Lillington. So right near there. And um, that's where I used to go to the mall and everything. And like I said, my sister lives there, so I go there quite a bit. And it's where Knives Illustrated is based out of. So I'm assuming I'm going to be going down there soon once uh, travel restrictions are lifted and all that stuff. I think I have to go down there for some meetings. So um need to clear a big space to disassemble the Maddox. Not a big space. You just got to have the rubber mat. The rubber mat is the most important thing, I think, of a good knife maintenance kit because you drop a screw and instead of it bouncing across the room, it just goes dunk and it stops. Um, and I'm sorry, Ashkin, I will not, I will not restrict your balls. But no, it's not. Oh, and Raleigh and the brewery game is good. I'm from Wisconsin, though, so beer game is the best up here. Bionic says, yeah, I've, I've had some really good beers in Wisconsin. I used to go there once a year for a bike rally, and, uh, yeah, I go to I used to go to Stevens Point, and, yeah, they always had really awesome beer. SS locks are rough to work on, Bony Blaze says. They absolutely are. You just always need one more hand. Point beer is very good, Bionic. You are correct. Um... Will we ever see CPM S125 V Steel? I have no idea. Um, you read my knife maintenance article. Yeah, Rusty Knife Lover. Yeah, thank you for reading that. Um, it did really well. It's one of the best received articles we've had online in quite a while. So, uh, Jack Knife says, How are you enjoying the new job with Knives Illustrated? Um, I have no clue what I'm doing yet, but other than that, I'm really liking it. No, it's uh, creatively. I'm there. I know what I want it to look like in a year or so, and we're working towards that, and everybody's on board with me, and they like what I'm doing. They love the new podcast, that stuff. Um, the technical side, still figuring out, like, what, where to put stuff in what folder so the next person looks at it and 
We also changed, not when, when I came in, we also got a new art director and a new managing editor, which it just, it's a, uh, it sounds like she's above me, but she isn't. It's just like somebody does the proofreading and making stuff look pretty. And um, th those two are new as well. So it's a lot of us saying, uh, who does this? Who does this? Who does this? And, uh, but they've been great. Everybody's been holding my hand. It's been awesome. And uh, starting tomorrow is when I start editing the new issue that's all mine. So I didn't get picked the theme. That was already picked. A lot of the articles were already picked. But um, the next one is like all mine. So that's the one that's going to be pretty stressful. But uh, it is a bushcraft themed issue as well, which is something that I don't know that much about. So I'm relying on other people. But I did get one of those. Uh, oh my gosh, I really want to talk about this on the channel, but it's down or on, on the show tonight. But it's downstairs. What is the cheap, the cheap machete that you can buy at like Lowe's and stuff? The Thomas something or other. Does somebody know what that is? If somebody can go look at Lowe's.com, I bought one of those, and. Um, because I actually just needed a machete to hack some weeds. Thank you, DTO. I very much appreciate it. And yes, the super chat is open if anyone wants to kick anything in. Um, I bought one of those. So I'm including that in the bushcrafting thing because I loved using it. It's actually like cheap and nice. And then I looked it up as I often do. I buy something. Yes, Tramontina. That's it. Um, I got a Tramontina and... As, as I often do, I buy something and then watch, then look for reviews after I've already purchased it. <laughs> and uh, there's like a little cult following there, but it really needed to be sharpened out of the box and it's huge. So I got in touch with WorkSharp. WorkSharp sent me one of those, uh, they sent me one of their powered sharpening systems with like everything on it. The whole like uh, the Ken Onion set, all the different belts and everything. And you know what? I... I do not hate that thing. Like, I'm such a snob about sharpening. I didn't think I was really going to like it. But, man, that works sharp. If you have all the different belts and the whole setup, it is not bad. Uh, I really, really, really like it. Thank you, Ronan Graves, very much. I appreciate that. Very generous of you. Um, the Ken Onion version especially, like, yeah, if I spend an hour and a half on my Viper Sharp, can I get a better edge? Absolutely. But you can spend seven minutes on the WorkSharp and get an edge that's better than okay. That's It's great. I really love it. It does give you a bit of a convex edge, but if you just want to get, you know, a, a quick, I, I sharpened all of our kitchen knives tonight in 45 minutes, I think. Just switching belts and running through them. There was like seven or eight kitchen knives that I just went through. And it was super easy because the Ken Any one goes all the way down to 10 degrees, which is what I sharpen my kitchen knives at. And it was just, it was awesome. It's just so easy and just so good. I even sharpened my uh, TRM Adam on it. I had a my wife uh, one time threw my TRM Adam on the floor. She was standing on a ladder, asked for a knife. I handed it to her. She got done with it, just dropped it and uh, put a chip in the blade and... I never fully, 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 fully got that chip out. It took me, it took me, uh, you know, 10 minutes on the workshop. That chip is a memory. And I got this dropping, you know, uh, belt and everything. It has a pretty good mirror edge on it. I could probably do a little bit better on my Viper Sharp, but it would take me like an hour and a half. So uh, I... I'm I'm kind of becoming a fan of the WorkSharp. Like I didn't think I would. I but I really really like it. So yeah, that's in the next issue of Knives Illustrated is the Tramontina uh, machete and um, the uh, WorkSharp. If you guys want to see a video of the Tramontina, I could shoot something. It's gonna be weird because it's too big to do desktop down. So it's gonna be me out hacking at weeds. So let me know if you want to see that. But um, uh, do you use the freehand attachment? It's kind of all freehand. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, but um, I, I, if you're using the Ken Onion attachment, it's kind of all freehand. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's all I use. I've never used the stock one that came with it. Uh, what about the KME? I don't have a KME, so uh, um, lavender pants. Yes, advanced knife bro style. I don't know if I don't know if Mark would like that, but uh, I'd have to get a cigarette to hang out of my mouth. Uh, but but uh, 
Yes, outdoor machete video yesterday, please. All right, I'll do something. I'll do something stupid with the with the Tramontina. But I I actually honestly do really like it, and I had to go out and do yard work with it. Um, like the day I got it, I sharpened it up as best I could with like uh, I had a cheap, one of those cheap work sharp pull through sharpeners because one video said that was the best way to sharpen it. And, um, and I did that to put a bit of an edge on it. And then, uh, I went, I had the big machete thing strapped on my hip and I went out and cut some weeds. I thought it was going to take me like two hours. It took me like, like half an hour. And then I just, I just walked around, uh, my house all day with this big giant machete hanging off my hip because it made me feel cool. And my wife didn't like it, but, uh, that's what I did. Um, yeah, I used the Ken Onion attachment. I love my combo electric sharpener from Worksharp. Yeah, it is. I, I'm a I'm a convert. I'm a fan. LHBR, stop rambling and acknowledge my existence. I didn't see you. Sorry. Sorry, Lori. That's my wife, LHBR. She's on here. She can attest that she doesn't like my giant... We were talking about my new giant machete that you're not a fan of. Um... KME is worth it, brother. I love it. Yeah, I have the Viper Sharp, and I like that a whole lot. So it just hasn't really... I haven't really found the need to go buy a KME, so... Because the Viper Sharp does everything that 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 I need to do. But I think uh, Lori will attest that, that that machete did make quick work of the ridiculous amount of giant weeds we had uh, in our back courtyard. She commented that I got through them a lot faster than she thought I would. Yeah, I thought that was going to be like a three-hour job, and it was like half an hour. I even hacked through like some, uh, chopped through some like actual like branches and stuff that fell down over the winter. We didn't have that much snow this winter, but we had so much wind. There was branches down everywhere. Uh, much better on a work sharp over a whetstone. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I don't have any whetstones yet. I need to, need to get off my butt and try that. The work sharp is making me feel more confident in doing that. Do you have a video on a work sharp? No, I actually just got it, uh, yesterday. So I haven't really had a chance to do anything. Uh, choil or no choil hinder? It depends on my mood. I've been in a no choil, uh, mood lately, but, um, uh, I like the I I still have an XM18. Um Yes, working on them tonight. Oh, is somebody asking about uh more masks or something? Um is your half track a triway? Yes it is. It is uh the USA May Blade exclusive um warning. That's the only place you can get the warnings. Uh you can't right now. That's the only place you could get the warnings. Uh, but yeah, no, it's a triway. You can always tell cuz it's got the thing on it, but it was flipped the other way, so you couldn't see that. Oh, Star Wars mask, yeah. Funny how you buy a cheap machete to do yard work, but a five hundred dollar knife to do Amazon boxes. Mark Ridgewell says, "Yes, that that is a hundred percent correct. That, that is exactly how my brain works." Yep. And I wear uh, I wear forty or fifty dollar dress shoes and uh, two hundred dollar sneakers, so it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, all warny episode. I think I might have enough. I don't like swords. Yeah, it is. Now, the Tramontina is a, is technically, it's a Brazilian made and designed, not designed machete. And it is technically a fighting machete. So, um, I do kind of understand her, uh, her objection there. Grail sneakers. Oh, um, I think I kind of have them, but I have close to it, I guess. I've got a pair of uh, Jordan Retro Ones that are all monochrome. They're all blacked out. And those are probably my favorites. Uh, but I would like another pair of Jordan Retro Ones in the um, original color, like I had in high school. Uh, but I just don't have an excuse to get those. I just get a pair of Air Maxes because my feet hurt all the time, and it's... All my shoes that are vent well ventilated um, are worn out. So uh, for summertime, I got a pair of Air Maxes, and I like those a lot. 
Um, I've had those for like a week now, and they've been making my feet happy. I have terrible feet. I've got this stupid plantar fasciitis stuff. I actually got the cheap Air Maxes, too. I got the uh, Air Max. Um, I don't know what they are. They're on my feet. What, you want to, here, we're going to put them on camera. Got these ones. Like, they're Air Max Axis. Yeah, they're not bad. I think they were like, uh, I got them through the military exchange. They were like 72 bucks. I think they're, um, I think they're uh, like 90 regularly. Uh, given PNW says, do you carry a pry tool? I do, I do not. Um, but I'm, I just reached out to Lynch about getting one because, um, for my, uh, an article for our EDC guy for Knives Illustrated. So I will see if I like carrying one. I never have, but we'll see. Uh, Ronan Graves said, finally picked up the TRM Vider this week. Love it. It is really cool. It's a very unique sort of, of, of slip joint. Um, Herm D says, you're a sneakerhead slicey. Uh, yes, but one on a very limited budget because uh, I don't have a YouTube channel about sneakers. So I can't make an excuse to buy a whole lot of sneakers. I think I think my wife who's on here right now, that's LHBR, I think she will attest that she would much rather I review knives than sneakers because at least the knives are much easier to store and don't take up as much room in the house. Apparently, Brian didn't see my message. There's a tasty treat waiting for you. What? Did you make a snack? Oh, Rice Krispie Treats. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is going to get wrapped up really quick. I, I love Rice Krispie Treats. They're very, very good. Why am I talking to you guys? Because I love you all. And there's 131 of you on here. So, um, but yeah. I don't know if you heard me, Lori, but yeah, wouldn't you much rather I have knives uh, that I have a knife channel than a sneaker channel? Can you imagine what our house would look like if I had a sneaker channel? And my cat would have so many things to sleep in. If you ever want to catch my cat, just just drop down a an open sneaker box. He's in it instantly. And he does not fit in them. Uh, how do I purchase something you're selling? Just uh, that's all down below in the description. That's a list of everything for sale and uh, how to uh, how to email me and all that stuff. Warning half track is sexy. I do like it a whole lot. Uh, how much for the Malibu? That is not for sale. Until they come out with fancy Malibus and I get one of those, then it'll be for sale. But uh, right now it is not. This is actually the second uh, Malibu that second production Malibu they got sent out. Dr. Frunky got his first, and then I got mine. So um, it's a very, very early one. There's no serial number or anything, but uh, I just I just know that. Uh, I don't know this. I've emailed about the shit. Yep, I saw it. I, I'm not going to answer it till this is over with, obviously. But you got it. You're the first one. So I'll email you payment instructions after this is all, all done with. It's actually the only email I've gotten while I've been doing this. So I'm... Um, have you seen the new decked out Malibu protect? Yes, I did see that. Now that I'm not, that's not my, my, that's not in my price range. But if they do something like this in a Malibu, I'll be all about it. Can I see the protect? Which one? Did you win the hinder or knife fight? I did not. That's why I'm drinking a Bud Light tonight. That was what I lost because he drinks Bud Light on his shows. So that was my, how I lost the bet. Uh, Newport. I think I missed something there. Uh, what's up, man? What part of New York are you from? Um, I'm from the southern tier from the Finger Lakes area, but uh, I live in Rochester and have for the last decade. I've lived all over the place in between, but is the Hogue still available? Um, I sold a Hogue like a week ago, but no, I, no, I don't have any Hogues available that's not these aren't these two aren't for sale and none of the things on here are for sale it's just what's listed down below how about that 80 20 mark ridgewell says i was all excited to get one i thought they were going to be four or five hundred and they were 825 so um i'm not going to be getting one of those but i'm very excited for whenever cold steel eventually inevitably makes one Uh, 
Damn, my wife's going back to work full time next week. So uh, can you show it? Oh, the the Newport. Yeah. Oh, the one that I have for sale. It's just the the plain black one. It's not that one. This is the one I have for sale. The plain black one. Yeah, they're eight twenty five for the eighty twenty. They are quite pricey. Um, but it looks like a really cool lock, and I'm excited about it. But um, cool. Shoot me an email. Because I replaced it. So that's that's the only reason I'm selling it. I love the Newport, but I got a fancier one. I like it so much, I just wanted a fancier one. What's the steel on the bed? S35 VN. All, all the Newports are S35. They're not 154 like a, a lot of Protex are. Which is another thing I like about the Newport. Good night, Lori. Love you. I'll be down in a bit. Uh... Any suggestions on how to get the smell of 50-year-old smoke out of leather? Chief BZ says, I don't know. Uh, move? Buy another one? Um, yep, she is an essential worker. She works in uh, child care. So, uh, yeah, she has to get up and go there in the morning. It's their first day with kids back. So I'm, I'm happy for her. She, she stayed employed through all this. It's been great. So, uh, yeah. Thoughts on updates to the Microtech Ultratech? I haven't seen anything about the updates to that. I have a UTX-85. The Ultratech was always a little bit big for me. Although, I say it's a bit big for me, and then I also have... Is it within reach here? Where did I put that case? I don't know where I put my other case. There it is. Um, I say the Ultratech is a bit big for me, and then I also have this, so I guess I can't, I can't say that, because one of my favorite autos that I have is, uh, a Heretic Hydra, so, <laughs> yeah, can't really, I guess I can't really say an Ultratech's too big when I have that, but, um, I don't carry the, uh, Hydra outside of the house, though. That, that's not a knife that you use in front of in front of the humans uh, very often. It's very large and scary. But you know what? It's going in my pocket tonight now that I got it out. Uh, did you see the Medford Virtual Blade Show? Oof, that was a thing. No, I had a gig, so um, I did not have time to check in on that. I, I saw him mention something about that it didn't work, like it crashed or something like that. Uh... Got your got your email, Brandon. I'll reply to it when this is all over with. Um, have you ever you ever handle a Grinsmo Norseman? Brett Highland asks. I have not. I think they are hideous, so I've never really wanted one. So one of my friends, who I will not name, actually just posted today. He saw a Norseman for sale, and it was a pretty plain spec, and it looked nice for a Norseman. And I said, "That's the best looking Norseman I've ever seen." But that's like saying that's the best placed third nipple I've ever seen. So, yeah, yeah, I do not like the look of the Norseman at all. Just remember, a drop has 80 tens for 139 which seems like an awesome price. That is a really good price, Sharpen Blade. Yeah, that's a great price. I love my 8010. I think I actually have it here because I just had it out for a review um, as a comparison knife. Oh, when I did the SR1, which I had that here too. Yeah, I love the 8010. It's great. I do love the Watsu, because the Watsu is just, I don't know, I, I, I kind of like the look of it. I don't know. I just like it. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but Grimm's, but Norseman's are just, that blade shape just is gross. I'm going to bring the SR1 out, though. You guys didn't seem to like this, but I really like it. According to my view count, you guys didn't really seem to like it, but get the Espada XL. I actually have a... Uh, Chris Voyager XL. So I have one that's nearly as big, and I think that's the biggest Coles deal that I need to have. Thoughts on Hinder or non flipper? I really, really, really want a non flipper Planes Crafter, but I want a three and a half, and the only ones I see pop up all the time are three inches. I don't like the three incher XM18. SR1 is so beefy. Yeah, but it's 60 bucks. It's like, like I said in the video, it's like kind of the ultimate beater knife. It really is for like yard work and stuff like that. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Uh, 
And I know it's 8CR13, but I really honestly think with Cold Steel, and Cold Steel's never given me a dime. I've never gotten anything for free from Cold Steel, nothing like that. Um, I've spoken to Lynn Thompson once, but their heat treat on their stuff is so good that if there's one place I'm going to get 8CR from, it's Cold Steel. And it's, you know, because their OS 8 was great. Their OS 10A is great. Everything they heat treat is just that 4134, whatever it is that Steely use, works really well. I just, and this, if you watch Jimmy Slash's video where he beat the hell out of it, I mean, he beat the hell out of one of these things, and it was fine. Uh, how's the Heretic? I've always loved the Microtech Halo series. Uh, the Heretic is just, oh, the thing I always say about this knife is that um, every time I see it, 416, that's it, me with knives, thank you. Um, every time I see it, I have to fire it. It's just, every time I see it, I pick it up. It's just like Pavlov's dog. It is just the ultimate shiny object for me. Um, it kicks so hard. I, and uh, they told me that the spring in this is actually like twice the length of the handle. <laughs> so that's why it fires so hard. It's just crammed, or one and a half times the length of the handle. And it's just crammed in there. And I never thought it was like something I was, the single action was something I was going to love. And how does it close? It's a single action. So you fire it, and then you have to push the button again and then cock it. And one of the only knives I'm going to keep the lanyard on because it's useful on this um, because you can just pull the lanyard. So, and that's where it's got all, that, the, all the information and stuff on there. Hidden away in there. I just freaking love this thing. I didn't want a single... I actually asked them for another knife. I asked them for one of the other models. The uh, Oh, I can't remember it now. Their double action one. And they said, well, we'd rather have you review the Heretic. And I was like, alright, cool. Send me that. See you later, OCD. Really been loving your stuff lately, by the way. I'm sorry I didn't notice you on here earlier if I didn't say hello. Um, uh, but yeah, you've been, you've been killing it lately, man. I've been watching a lot of your videos. Uh... Someone says, Sean, you love the whiskers. Yeah, the Protech whiskers is really cool. My favorite thing about the Protech whiskers is that you hand it to people and they have no clue how to open it. And it just makes me giggle. Uh, try opening it into a cardboard box and see if it derails. Ashcan, it does not. I will tell you that. That's one thing about sync. Most, I don't think any of the single actions derail. That's something I was taught on a live stream. Somebody told me that and I was like, no, I think it does. And then I jabbed it into a roll of tape and it does not. No, it does not derail. Um, that's the one downside to uh, single actions is they don't derail. Double actions derail and single actions don't, as far as I understand. I'm still kind of new to the OTF thing, but do you still have your Blade HQ dapper thoughts on it? And do you think they'll make another run of it? I do not, and I do not think they are. Um, have you seen the new Boker brass pen? I haven't, but I have a Boker uh, 50 cal, and I really like I have a Micarta Boker 50 cal, and I, I like it. Ashcan says, hot in MC's face. Why would I hot in MC's face? He has more He has more followers than me. Uh, would you ever get the Hinder or Full Track? I would really like a Full Track. I actually have, right now, I always have a window open in my browser of a particular place that has the exact Full Track that I want. And um, if I ever hit a financial windfall, I would get it. But I'm not going to tell you where it is because I don't want anybody to go snap it up. I think people, it's like way down, like multiple pages down in their search. And I don't think anybody realizes it's there. Um, Sing Anthony says, single action is probably however strong the spring is, wouldn't it? Yeah, basically. This thing, that string is so strong, it pushes my hand away before it, you know, anything else. Uh, you're very welcome, Penny. Um... I argue with them that there are single actions that don't derail. I haven't, I haven't, this is the only one that I've had and a single action. And I was told by a couple of different people that single actions don't derail. So that's, that's what I know. Both of my, uh, double actions I've had. Um, I used to have, I had a guardian 
and then the UTX-85 that I have uh, derail pretty easy. I mean, if you fired it into your hand, it would draw blood, but it's just be like a little pinprick, and then it's just going to derail. Uh, Jocksnipe says, I, uh, autos are pure eye candy for me. I, I, it may be OTS, but uh, out the sides, no, I have a lot of out the sides I really like using, just like real life. Uh, if you could EDC one of your autos, which would be your main choice, David Larson says, Either the Protec Newport or the Protec SBR. Uh, one of those two. Where is my SBR? Let me get it out here. See, this is proof I do have a metal complex sticker. I'm also fulfilling another part of my bet. I'm showing them the metal complex sticker. I just didn't have an extra one to put on my beer because I gave it away to some of you guys. So, um, But yeah, autos I would EDC because I do now. I'd say the two that I carry the most are the Newport and the SBR, which is a Les George design. So uh, one of those two. Yeah, I think I think some autos are great EDCs. This thing is awesome. It's very small. It just kicks. It's fun, and it's just it's a great blade. SS thirty five VN. The Newport is just so slicey, and so classy and stuff. Yeah. Uh, BZ says, got a real hidden gem, the real steel Griffin, $50 button lock with full drop shutting. See, I need to try one of those out. I've, I do like a whole lot of real steels. I'm going to do a very, very, very positive review of a real steel tomorrow morning. And if, uh, it hasn't sold by then, I'm probably just going to keep it. Um, cause I do like it and I like the designer a lot. Newport is such a nice looking knife. It really is, especially in the fancier pants versions, but even in the basic, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, let me go up here and see if I missed anything. I'm going to scroll back a bit because I do miss stuff. We're past our usual time, so we're probably going to wrap this up here in a minute. Lavender Pants says, I'd love to own the full track. Have it on my hand one time. I was shocked how much of it. They are really great, and I, I hear they're done. I don't know. Uh, Shinob says, would you ever EDC a fixed blade? I've tried, and it just doesn't work for me. I... I'm very, very sensitive about stuff around my my waist. And, like, I don't even put anything in my back pockets or anything like that. I just don't – I never have nothing in my back pockets. I just uh, – sorry for the double negative. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't – fixed plates just aren't – yeah, I don't like them. Uh, Zach Stuff says, yoo or Nesquik? yoo I'm a child of the 80s. yoo all day long, every day. I love yoo Best place to find knives secondhand market. Um, uh, I would say Reddit, the that Reddit um, knives and trade thing, whatever it is, um, or Blade Forums, one of those, or Instagram sometimes too. Um, yeah, where can you get a Griffin now? Yeah, knife swap. That's it. Thanks, Matt J. I appreciate it. Yeah, I may put some stuff up on there myself actually. Best place I found to sell knives is to uh, get a YouTube channel with 16,800 subscribers. Usually works pretty well, but that takes a while. So probably knife swap. Or Slice Dicey Patreon. There you go, Jocks Knives. Thank you for pimping my own thing that I should have. Yeah. Nothing. That's the thing why I haven't done a knife selling video on here now. I've only have 77 patrons, but you, they snap stuff up. So I haven't had enough to do a full on knife sale video. Um, there are some knives that, uh, you're never going to see again that were already, already gone. I will tell you, um, I already sold my sham weary. I would show it to you, but it's in a box. So, uh, sold that, um, yesterday, day before. Um, yeah. Every time I showed that production sham worry, people got mad. <laughs> so, uh, and I couldn't fathom another video as gonna do with it oh well, i'm answering now Stephen over why such a quick turn around the shame i could not fathom another video i was gonna do with it because every time i showed it people were upset about the launch and all that stuff so um i just sold it and i did not gouge anybody i sold it for 300 bucks which they were 283 brand new and i figured the two hours it took me to buy one of those freaking things was worth 17 bucks of my time so I made it. I sold it for three hundred, fair price. I could have sold it for five or six hundred somewhere else, but um, I just didn't didn't feel right about that. I don't want to 
I don't want to, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you the one who bought a labor mess? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, exactly. Jerry Russell, it wasn't worth the hassle. And every time I put it up, people complain about it justifiably. So, and I thought, yeah, I didn't think you were, I thought, uh, yeah, I thought Chris Lauer bought it. Um, but I just want it to be like, I just wanted it gone. I just didn't, I'm not going to do anything else with it. It's a really nice knife, but I have a lot of really nice knives. And if there's no content coming for them, they have to be truly special for me to keep them like this. No content coming for this half track. This is probably never going to be another video other than live shows, but this is special. Going to keep it. Um, the Heretic, I have one video coming for it. I still haven't done the full review of it. And, uh, but it's special to me that I'm probably going to keep, but the, sh the Shamweary, I just, eh, it's a really nice front flipper. I have a lot of really nice front flippers. So see you later, big red. Have a good one. Yeah. Ronan, it just didn't have that something. I heard you about the Griffin. I heard you. I'll look for it. Um, Thoughts on flippers, people buying and selling, or just to sell a dumb markup three seconds later, tackle central fishing says, I hate them. And that's why I sold my sham for 300 because, um, yeah, I could have easily gotten 500 for it, but I'm not saying like, I'm this great person. I'm not trying to put myself up on a cross or anything, but, uh, I just, I didn't feel right about it. So I don't, I, I complain about those people. So if I was one of those people, it would just be hypocritical and uh yes i do have rice krispie treats coming so yeah i should probably jump off here and go eat rice krispie treats i am a bit peckish so uh i may i did make pork loin and uh baby red potatoes tonight in the crock pot though and it was pretty freaking great so uh i'm a bit full but i'm, I'm getting a bit peckish now that was three hours ago so um, could have bought the full track of that money i could have but i didn't so um yeah, that's why I have some other stuff for sale. No, I, I got to pay some bills. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and had a good time. Uh, I've been Brian. You've been you. And thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun tonight. It's kind of fun just to get back to normal a little bit. I had that little sale, but just kind of fun to get back to normal. Um, I'm going to finish the last quarter of my Bud Light here. And then I'm probably going to go cry in a gutter or wherever it does that, whatever it is that Bud Light drinkers do. And uh, I will see you next week. Excuse me. Gosh, that Bud Light is kicking back already. Have a good night, everybody.